I'm your host, Tanya Tyler, and I'm excited today because we're going to learn how to take that 17-pound weight and make it easier for us to pick it up. What I'm talking about, if you don't know, is call reluctance. That pound, that that weight is, that we can't pick up that phone and make up is going to be something a lot easier because I have an expert on our phone and, and on the line today, Ms. Brenda Aviar, and she's going to tell us about how to make that 17-pound weight disappear. So, Ms. Brenda. Welcome to uh, the, our episode here. Thank you, Tanya. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today because this is something people don't really like to do. No, no. I, uh, for those, well, I always say for those who don't know, for those who don't know, um, Ms. Brenda was my coach for over a year. She helped me do some amazing um, things by picking up the phone and stuff like that. So I had to have her come on, explain to us, why is it that we are so afraid to pick up that phone? Yeah, and it is. It's a problem that a lot of people have. And I think it comes from things that have happened to us in our past sometimes. It may be that someone corrected us over being on the telephone, you know, listening to our calls. Or maybe it was a supervisor who didn't give us the... Um, praise that we needed in order to feel confident in being on the phone. And sometimes it's just the fear of somebody saying no, or don't ever call me again. And they don't do that. I mean, that hasn't happened to me. Now I have had people say to me, you know, I'm so glad you called, but I'm not really interested in doing coaching now. I'm doing something else. Or I've gone to work for a company and I don't, you know, need a coach. But no one has ever said to me, hey, don't call me again. People, people are usually kinder than that. We live in a kind society. So we need to look at why we're afraid to pick up the phone. And that's normally, it relates to something based in fear. Or maybe at one time we had a bad experience with someone on the phone or someone really got honest. But I've been in sales for probably almost 50 years. I'm a sales and business coach. I mean, I traveled all over North America training people in sales and how to have conversations that work. And that's the thing, having the confidence that you can have a conversation that works. Because picking up the telephone is an integral part of your business strategy. Without being able to master the phone, it's going to be much harder to build your business than it is if you're confident in picking up the phone. I have a client who um, called me once and, sh and said to me, I need to make $10,000 more this month and I don't know how to do it. And, I, and she says, what am I going to do? I said, you're going to pick up the phone and you're going to call everybody unconditionally. You know, this is an equal opportunity to call people. So that means you print a list and you go down the list and you don't go back and forth on who to call and who not, what, who not to call. Because we are creatures of wanting the low hanging fruit. We want to call the people that are jovial and nice and fun to talk to. Sometimes we don't want to call the person who maybe the first conversation, you know, they ask us too many difficult questions or maybe we... Uh, didn't didn't know we were intimidated to ask the strong questions that we need to ask. And this happens. Don't be that person. If someone has given you their business card, don't tell me that you can't call them because it might be their work number. If you have ever, if you have ever worked in a business <laughs> where you cannot take personal phone calls, trust me. You may get, may get your first call, but you're not going to let anybody else have that number. You know, if you can't be called at work, you're not going to get the number. So right. if they give you the work number, call them at work. It's okay. They gave it right. to you. That's giving you permission to call. And people 
think worse of you if you don't call than they do when you do call. It's an integral part of, I, call, I put it in the, in the um, context of follow-up because follow-up starts from the very moment you meet the person and it lasts forever. Right. A lot of people think that that starts at the end of the sales process. When you get the contract, it's signed or you get the order and it's delivered. They think that is when follow-up starts, but it really isn't. It starts from the time you meet the person, which involves communication, which involves the telephone. Um, this client, I want to go back to this story though, because this client, she said, what am I going to do? I said, you're going to call. You're going to call, you know, with equal opportunity phone calls. Who are you to judge? Who is the person you should talk to? So I'm going to do a contest with you tomorrow. We're each going to take an hour and we're each going to go down our list. We're going to print a list and we're going to go straight down the list and we're going to call everybody. See how many people we talk to and what kind of results we get. So I was confident. I'm not afraid of talking on the telephone. However, I have to tell you the truth on what happened. I got down to the fifth person on the list and this person was a very nice person who I respect and I met a few times, but she wasn't really, didn't make me feel very good on the call. She was asking difficult questions and she wasn't responsive to my answers. And I got to her name and I thought, Oh, she might just tell me never to call her again. And I know you felt that way, right? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so I skipped her and went to number six. <laughs> and, I, and I called number six and I called number seven. And then I started feeling guilty. I asked my client to go straight down the list and I skipped somebody. So I said, I've got to do this with integrity. So I went back and she was now instead of number five, she was number eight. And I called her. And this is what normally happens when you're reluctant to make a phone call because you're afraid of the outcome. This is what actually happened. I called her. I call everybody Mary. So if your name is Mary, I'm not talking about you. But <laughs> I called her and I said, Mary, it's Brenda Aveyard. How are you? She goes, oh my gosh, Brenda, I was just thinking about you. I've been thinking about you for about a week. I said, well, what have you been thinking about? She said, when we talked a couple months ago, you told me I would probably be in the same position that I'm in right now in two months. And you were going to call me to check on me. She said, I'm in the same position or maybe a little bit lower. She said, I need to talk to you. What do you have going on right now? Do you have a short program or something that I could get my sales skills on a higher level? I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. I have a program that's 12 weeks. That's when I was doing the seven steps of the sales process. And she said, okay, I think I'll do that. So um, I ended up calling the person that I was reluctant to call who ended up doing a program that I had to offer. Wow. Oh, wow. it happens that way. So the one that you're reluctant to call is often the one who is the most gracious to talk to you. Right. There's one saying that I've used my entire career. I, I learned this saying, I don't know who the author is, but I learned it when I was a young woman, I think I was 28, and I belong to a women's networking group called The Future Woman. I always thought, The Future Woman? What am I now? <laughs> you know, but <laughs> right. there was a saying, and they had it on the website. I'll never forget this because it stuck with me. And I tried to find who wrote it, but I can't. It said, Do the thing you fear the most, and that will be the death of fear. And I want to say it one more time Do the thing you fear the most. And that will be the death of fear. It has helped me through so many challenges when I don't want to do something and I take a breath and I think, why is it? Is it fear or is it laziness? It's one or the other normally. And right. when it's fear, I think, well, when I do it, 
that'll be the death of fear and I won't be afraid anymore. Right. So that is something that you need to work on because the call reluctance will keep you from getting the results that you so desire in your business because we all know, and I'll say it, I've heard it a million times and so have you, and I hate saying it, but it's so true. It's like no and trust. People have to like, know, and trust you before they're going to do business with you. And the best way to build that relationship is on the telephone. Yes, some businesses are totally built online, but it usually, it usually ends up with a telephone call at some point. Right. So you, you just have to reach out there and do it. And going back to my client, she made the $10,000 that week in sales because she picked up the phone and made phone calls just asking, you know, how are you doing? Um, I'm running a special for the last four days of the month and I have, this is a special and I know you use this product. Would you like to place an order? And people did. And it wasn't a lot. I think it was 10%. It wasn't a lot. You don't have to give away the company in order to get, to get purchases. So just remember, do the thing you fear the most, and that will be the death of fear. But if you add phone calling to your clients, you'll see your growth, it'll just bloom faster. Right, right. I, I like what you're talking about when you say um, pick up the phone, because like I said, I'm, I'm reading a lot, and I'm, maybe you can explain it more. Isn't sales really about the relationships? It's all about the relationships. It's totally about the relationship. And how do you build the relationship? You build it through communication. Now, what is more powerful, to send an email or to make a phone call? Right. People it's that personal touch. It's the personal touch that makes all the difference in the world. When you are looking to, um, when you're looking to determine if a person that you met is a prospect or suspect, do you want to be sending? you know, them a bunch of emails saying, well, you know, do you have the time, money, and interest in my product? Where if you're having a conversation that you don't say it that way. But right. there's some information you just can't get through an email or through a text. And I leave email, I leave voicemails and follow them up with emails. I just, I just left you a voicemail. I wanted to ask you a question that only you can answer. Now, what does that do? It creates curiosity and curiosity creates a response. So if you want to get their attention, now if I called you Tanya and said, Tanya, I, have to, I need to ask you a question, but you're the only person that knows the answer to it. Would you call me back? Of course. You would be curious, wouldn't you? I want to know what, what, what does she want? <laughs> yeah, what does she want? Or, you know, maybe I know something that I have something she needs and I would like to help her. But those are some of the reasons why people have call reluctance. But if you really want to grow your business as fast and get the results that you want to, you have to be able to overcome that call reluctance. Right. I know also when you when you're talking when you're talking about the call reluctance and you're making a phone call, I would say how important is it to put yourself in the right mood before you do it because people can pick up on the tone when you call, right? They certainly can. And if you right now, let's talk about right now, but this may be this may be heard later a year from now. But right now in the present, we're going through the COVID nineteen um, situation. People have more call reluctance now than they have ever had because we are living in a time that we don't understand. We're living in a time where everything has changed and we're living in a time where people feel that maybe they shouldn't try to sell anything, but you have a business and you have, you can't quit your business just to be what people deem to be polite. All you need to do is get on the phone and call people. Call and see how they're doing. Is there anything I can do to help you? I would say to somebody, is there any place in your business that you feel stuck right now? And it normally is 
the sales portion of the business. Or it may be the balance between having the kids home and the husband home and trying to do your work and cooking meals and homeschooling and doing all of those things. But just ask them, what can I help you with? If you're selling a product, you just call and say, hey, how are you doing? I was just thinking you and thought I'd thinking of you and thought I'd pick up the phone and call you. Because when we think of somebody, that's what we should do, is pick up the phone and call them. There's a reason why we thought of them. Don't you right. think? You're, that, you're intuitive. I mean, when, that doesn't come to us, I should call Tanya today. It doesn't come to us because we thought of that name out of the blue. It comes because we sense in the universe that there's something going on. I had that happen with a uh, one of my clients that was with me for a couple of years who graduated and went on to work on her own. And I called her and I said, hey, I just wanted to find out how you're doing through this crisis. And she says, oh my God, I'm so glad you called. Can we talk for a minute? And I said, sure. I said, what, what's going on? What do you? I said, I can sense in your voice you're having a problem with something. And she said, I am. I have no money coming in and I don't know what to do. And so we sat there and we come up, came up with like five solutions of things that she could do to bring some immediate revenue in, which was putting some of her beautiful products online and inviting people into a Facebook group, inviting people to go to her website to see and build the value in what she had as far as products. And it gave her some revenue. Not as much as when her store was open, but it gave her some revenue. But you know what it really gave her? Was a new perspective. It gave her a new way to think about things she could do rather than things she can't do. Because one of the reasons that people resist change is because they focus on what they have to give up to change rather than focusing on what they have to do to make a change for the positive. So doing phone calls in your business, whether it's to qualify prospective clients, whether it's to set up a sales conversation, whether it's to have that sales conversation on Zoom or by phone call now that we don't go out to meet people at Starbucks or Panera Bread, you know, it is, what we do and how we do it, we have to make that ask. And if we don't, it isn't going to happen. But we can't worry about what we have to give up because I promise you, every one of you that are in business out there right now, you have 30 minutes to an hour every day if you're controlling your time during your day. Because right. we have these things called time bandits and they're flying around us, distracting us like social media, emails. If we schedule our day and block our time, we always have time to make the phone calls. We just have to get rid of the head trash that is stopping us. Right. And one of the best things is just to ask people, how are you? I was thinking about you today and the conversation will begin. And once you start dialing and you start talking, all of a sudden you relax, your conversations are looser. You have the opportunity to really get into listening to people and what their needs are. And then you can serve them because selling is serving. Right. So when you call someone, you're really complimenting them and you're really there to help them. I had another lady who was in direct sales and she did a phone call. We've been working on phone calls a lot in the last month because people somehow have a feeling that they shouldn't be doing a lot of this right now because people would think they were insensitive. I said, well, you have to put food on your table. So you don't, you may ask in a different way, what you become is a better listener. Right. A better listener. And you, she made about five phone calls and I got a phone call. She says, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? She said, I was talking to somebody and I was just having a conversation that I was thinking about them. And she said, oh, before we get off the phone, don't let me forget. I need like four things. 
And so she ended up making a sale without even being salesy. People are afraid of being salesy, but if it sales is serving and you can't serve unless you communicate. And if you don't communicate by phone, you're missing the most positive area of getting results. Right, right. Well, Ms. Brenda, you gave us a lot of wisdom in our little 20 minutes. <laughs> So for those who are interested in finding more information about you and your services, where can they find that information at? I think the best way is just to go to my website, which is brendaaviard.com. And my last name, Aviard, is spelled Avenue Yard, A-V-E-Y-A-R-D. And if you go into my website, there's a button you can click, click at the top when you get in there to schedule a conversation with me. And you and I can just have a conversation about what your number one business challenge is. And I'll try to provide you with, you know, a tip or two that will really get you out of that place that you feel stuck. And if, you know, if we find that we're a good fit, then maybe we could work together. And if not, I love, I love talking to people about their business. So right. it's a win-win situation, either one. But I'd be happy to give any of your listeners an opportunity for a complimentary call about their number one business challenge. If it's call reluctance, I've got more tricks in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your information and being on our, our, on our web show today. And thanks for having me, Tanya. You know, you're one of the special people in my life, and I would do anything for you. So thank okay. you so much for thinking of me and asking me. I'm proud to be a part of oh, your thank show. Thank you. Thank you. And also, I want to remind those listeners who are checking in, I will provide Ms. Brenda Aviard's links on all her website and her information for you to follow up. Um, and also be able to um, give us some feedback on what you think about the show. And if you're interested or know somebody who might be interested in one, uh, finding out more information about the show or being a guest on the show, please feel, feel free to email me. I will also include my email in the link. And again, I want to say thank you, for uh, Brenda, for being here. Thank you. And I want to wish everybody a safe recovery during this COVID-19 period. And uh, thank you for check, checking us out. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. That's the best thing you can do for us today. All right. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.